Slack Attack. Hey, how y'all doing? Welcome back to the Major Slack Attack here for stuff for titillating tactical gaming. Hey, long time no see. Uh, sorry for my absence. Uh, I was very busy evaluating the video game that is candidate for the next real walkthrough here on my channel. And as many of you hardcore slackers might have guessed, that game is Witcher 3. Alright, alright, calm down, calm down. Now, after the GTA 5 fiasco, where I committed myself to a lengthy, real walkthrough of Grand Theft Auto 5 based entirely on the extremely good critical reception to the game, and then later realized that I ultimately thought that Grand Theft Auto 5 sucked, in my humble opinion, uh, if you want the complete lowdown on that, watch my Top 5 Reasons Why Grand Theft Auto 5 Sucks video. I'll put a link in the video description and or in an annotation. Now like I said, after the GTA 5 fiasco, I decided that the next game I had in mind for a real walkthrough here on Major Slack Attack needed a complete and thorough evaluation before I committed myself to a real walkthrough. So that's what I've been doing for the past two weeks. Has it been two weeks? It's been that long? Yes, Slack, it's been that long. Where have you been? I've been dozing. I'm dozing, Slack. Okay, well, I'm back. I'm back. Um, I've been doing an extensive off-camera private playthrough of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And I'm playing on the BC PC version, by the way. Um, more on that later. Slack. You better like this game, because I fucking love it. All right, all right, Pee-wee. Chill out, chill out. Don't hate on me. Don't hate on me because I have some criticisms about your favorite game, okay? I don't tell you that you're an idiot for loving the game. In fact, I'm happy for you. If you love the game without question, all the power to you, all right? I, on the other hand, have some reservations. It's a good game, but it's not without its problems. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Slack. Just get to the good stuff. Witcher 3, real walkthrough, yes? Or no. Okay, here we go. Let's get this out of the way right now. Witcher 3, real walkthrough, yes or no. Drum roll, please. The Witcher 3, real walkthrough, yes. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. Now, before we undertake this wild ride on the wild hunt, there are a number of things I'd like to review. Number one, what is Witcher 3? Witcher 3 is a massive, I mean massive, more on that later, open world role-playing game played in a third person perspective. It features Geralt as the main character you control who is essentially um, a 13th, 12th, 13th century spell sword with a Batman complex, sorry. <laughs> Don't ask me how a medieval spell sword knows anything about Batman, but they definitely have a lot in common. Uh, gameplay is centered around melee combat and the casting of magic spells, which in Witcher 3 are called signs. All right, spells are called signs. Uh, Witcher 3 is a genuine RPG as opposed to a fake RPG, fake role-playing game like uh, Far Cry 4, for example. The RPG system in Witcher 3 is constructed and limited such that you cannot max out every skill in the game and even if you could you couldn't have all the skills at your disposal at any one particular time all right you have to focus on a specific character build okay and naturally one that fits in with your playstyle uh witcher 3 is absolutely colossally humongous and i mean huge fucking mungus all right CD Projekt Red, the game developer, is estimated to be about 100 hours of game time split about equally between the main mission and the side mission, okay? The main, the main mission line and the side missions. That is about 50 hours main mission line and 50 hours of side missions, although I feel the latter to be probably an understatement. There, there just seems so much more than that because there's just so much more than missions. Check this out, check out this map. Look at all these question marks, okay, on this. This is just the second map that you encounter in the game, all right? And every question mark is a place to investigate and pretty much, you know, a place where you're gonna get into some kind of fight, all right? And oh, how many question marks are on this map? Like maybe a hundred right there? So like, and those aren't all just missions. Those are like, that's just, some of them may be missions. Others, it's just like, you know, bandit camps, monster nests, whatever, okay? A professional Witcher 3 game tester, okay? A professional Witcher 3 game tester who knew exactly what to do and only focused on the main mission line and skipped all the cutscenes still took a whopping 
25 hours to complete the game. Can you imagine? That's how big it is. Basically, he did a speed run through the game and it took him 25 hours to beat it. All right? So yeah, definitely a game worthy of a close evaluation uh, before I commit. Um, very well received. It's getting top marks. It's currently scoring just below <laughs> Grand Theft Auto V on Metacritic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for what it's worth. Yeah, uh, it's getting, everyone loves it. It's getting very, like, totally top marks. Um, and it is indeed a lot of fun to play. Worthy of a full price buy. If you pay full price for this game, you will get a lot of bang for your buck. But. But. <laughs> it's not without its problems, all right? Uh, there are several things uh, that are frustrating and or annoying to many players, including myself. Um, and they are as follows, okay? Number one, clunky and spastic gameplay. Uh, the controls are quite clunky and spastic until you get used to them. CD Projekt Red, once again, those are the game developers, even admitted as much when they issued patch 1.07 for the game which among other things introduced a new alternate movement control or alternate movement mode rather, okay? It's right here. Uh, you can set it to the original movement mode or the alternate movement mode. Now the alternate movement mode makes Geralt's, Geralt, Geralt, I think it's Geralt, Geralt's movements a lot tighter, okay? It is indeed, a, it's a big improvement, okay? But even then, the controls are still pretty clunky and pretty spastic until you get you know until you get used to them and I highly recommend that you um, use the toggle walk run uh, control a lot because whether Geralt runs or walks by default makes a big difference okay sometimes you want him walking other times you want him running by default all right so learn to use that control all the time and it will make a big difference the controls uh, the spastic, clunky, not bad. It, it's not a deal breaker though, okay? I got used to them finally. Um, number two, auto sheathing the sword. This is a big issue. This is a big, big issue uh, where Geralt sheathes his sword at the wrong time. Many, many people have noticed this, okay? It's not just me. Many people have noticed this and it's absolutely infuriating, okay? What happens is just out of the blue, right in the middle of a fight, Geralt will put away his sword and leave you facing a pack of deadly monsters with nothing but your fists. Okay, you're standing there, you know, you know, put him up with your with your dukes up, and it's ridiculous. And it, necess it necessitates you to waste time taking out your sword again before continuing combat, unless you want to try to punch out the monsters. You know, um, this is a result of two things. I figured this all out. I did a lot of research on this. First of all, it's, it's a result of a kind of a clunky management of key bindings on the PC version. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work on consoles. I'm sure I, I've read that some people on the console still have this problem, but on the PC version, the problem, one of the problems is where the C key, okay, the C key is hardwired to sheathing your sword, regardless of what you set the C key to in the game settings. So you can remap the C key to something else in the game settings and it will still have Geralt sheath his sword whenever you press that key. So let's say, for example, for me, I always have the C key configured to backing up. Okay, I use a DCSF movement config as opposed to the default WASD movement config. Don't ask me why. Long story, possibly is subject to another video. Um, anyways, many other people are having problems with this because even if you use the WASD config, you're bound to remap the C key to a favorite action simply because it's close to your fingers, you know? So a lot of people are realizing that whenever they press the C key, uh, expecting the other action to happen, um, that other action will happen, but Geralt will also put away his sword, you know? So um, yeah, it's really annoying. To fix this, yeah, you're gonna have to dig into the game's Files, okay, you have to edit one of the game files. It's called input settings. Okay, the input settings file on the PC version can be found in This folder my documents Witcher 3 all right, that's on Windows 7 my documents Witcher 3 and that's if you're playing the DRM free version of Witcher 3 I'll get I'll get to more on that later if you're playing the Steam version. You'll have to edit the input QWERTY 
.ini file. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> what? Slack, I'm out of here. Forget it. I ain't doing that. Yeah, it's, and this is buried like eight miles deep in the Steam subfolder system, okay? Here's the, the path to that. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, The Witcher 3, Bin, Config, R4 Game, Legacy, Base. Yeah, it's really deep. And you have to find the QWERTY input underscore QWERTY dot INI file and possibly any and all related files such as input azrt dot INI uh, any any file that looks like that annoyingly enough every time Witcher 3 puts out a patch it resets all your key bindings back to default which is why I think there are multiple key binding INI files I think I haven't tested that yet okay that's that's my theory so the, um, yeah and um, this is probably also something that I should do a whole separate video on but very quickly you want to edit these files what you want to edit in these files is all instances of ik underscore c equals like that okay put on the screen there ik underscore c equals open up these files okay find all instances of that okay do a search for ik underscore c equals without the quotation marks and change the c to another key that you want to assign to sheathing the sword preferably some key way across the keyboard that you're bound not to hit by accident okay i know this sounds complex and like i said really the subject for probably the subject for another video by the way if you're playing on the pc version of witcher 3 and you bought it through steam you do not have to run steam to play the game you can play it DRM free, all right? The path to the Witcher 3 game file is here. Steam, Steam Apps, Common, The Witcher 3, Bin, X, X64, Witcher3.exe. Yeah, I know, it sounds complicated. I'm perfectly at home with my PC, so all this is like, you know, is uh, baby talk to me, but maybe you don't know your PC that well. But yeah, that's where the Witcher 3 game file is. Look for that, look for your Steam fo folder, follow that path down to the subfolder where the Witcher 3 game file is stored. Right click on the Witcher3.exe file and send it to desktop to create a shortcut. Then you can click on or double click on that desktop shortcut to play the game without Steam. No problem. Witcher 3 is officially a DRM free game. It's what the get it's what the developers intended. They did not intend for this to be locked behind some kind of like game online game server like Steam or Uplay or or Origin or anything like that. It's supposed to be a DRM free game, all right? If I recall correctly, I think it's available for purchase on gog.com. That's goodoldgames.com. So buy it there instead of Steam. I highly recommend it. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, Steam. <laughs> you get enough of our business, anyways, with your total monopoly on DRM games. So, hey. Um, having tweaked your key bindings files, Geralt will no longer sheath the sword whenever you press the C key attempting to do something else. But. But. The problem still isn't fixed. <laughs> I know this is getting longer than I intended. Um, the problem still isn't fixed. It seems that there's a hidden setting in the game that. Uh, Geralt that has Geralt automatically sheath a sword when he <coughs> detects that he's no longer in combat. Now what officially constitutes no longer being in combat is kind of like, you know, it could be a proximity thing. I, I don't know. I mean, it's a cool looking feature, but once again, this is a classic example of game developers sacrificing function for form. This hitting setting is horribly configured because many times I've seen Geralt put away his sword right in the middle of combat. I mean like there's enemies all around me, okay? And somehow the game detected that he's like, you're no longer in combat now and he puts away his sword and I'm standing there holding my Charles Dickens, okay? It's really, it's ridiculous, it's infuriating. Um, this has got to change. Um, now this is no longer a deal breaker, although initially it had me literally I mean, I'm not kidding, screaming at my monitor every five minutes, okay? I was like, why the fuck are you putting away your sword? I was just like screaming, I was so infuriated. And, you know, other, a lot of other gamers, you know, same thing, you know, it's, it's just infuriating. Now I've somewhat gotten used to it, even to the point where I anticipated, but it's, it's still pretty annoying, nonetheless. Um, 
Yeah, like I said, not just me. Google it, folks. You'll see it's it's a, it was apparently a big problem with Witcher One. All right, they corrected it in Witcher Two, but now this problem has returned for some reason in Witcher Three. All right, so that's the deal on that. Next, poor documentation. This game is fairly complex, mostly because it's unique in the way it handles things in the game and in the menu system, particularly in the menu system. I mean, take a look at this, okay? It's like, you're supposed to remember what all these different icons mean? I mean, come on. Anyways, this wouldn't be so bad, except the game is very poorly documented. Even the official game guide pretty much sucks. I bought it on a recommendation that it rivals the Skyrim game guide and people, it doesn't even come close. I don't know what has happened to this game guide company, um, mentioning no names, but they've been with us since the get-go, but all of a sudden all their game guides are extremely poorly written. It's like they fired all their proofreaders to cut costs, I'm not kidding, it's like, it's the grammar and spelling in these game guides is so bad. It's really bad. Every other page is like two or three grammar and spelling mistakes. It's really bad. And they are putting these game guides on the market. It's like they're half baked and they're putting them on the market and people are buying them. As I'm really, you know, like mentioning no names, but I think I will never buy another game guide from this company. I am prima pissed off <clears throat> with the extremely substandard writing of their game guides, all right? <laughs> and mentioning no names. <laughs> I, I could go on and on, but once again, this is probably subject for another video. The main point is the official Witcher 3 game guide has no index, okay? It doesn't even come close to the Skyrim game guide, and it has a very poor table of contents. For a game this complex, an official game guide needs an index, okay? So the player can use the guide as a reference manual. For example, you cannot readily find the section on potions in the official game guide. There is no index and potions are not listed, pardon me, <coughs> potions are not listed in the table of contents. Small wonder why everybody and their monkey's uncle is so confused as to exactly how potions work in, in Witcher 3. Strike that. Small wonder why everybody and their monkey's uncle is confused as to exactly how anything works in Witcher 3. All right, this game is just begging for a real walker. I said I spent the last two weeks playing Witcher 3, but in fact, I spent easily half that time on Google researching exactly how everything in the game works. And when my real walkthrough comes out, I'm gonna lay all that juicy information on you guys so you too will know exactly how the game works, okay? Um, finally, in Witcher 3, there is enough story to stun an ox, okay? Plowing through the main mission line, I found myself, I'm not kidding, this is no exaggeration what I'm about to tell you. I found myself playing literally for hours, okay? Two, three, four hours at a time doing nothing but watching cutscenes, making dialogue decisions, doing detective work using the so-called Witcher sense, and then moving on to find another NPC and repeating the whole process. Hours hours seriously no exaggeration all right it gets downright tedious i never drank so much coffee in my life i've drank like buckets of coffee during the past two weeks trying to stay awake through all this all right this scene here pretty much summarizes the backstory in witcher 3 okay Geralt. dandelion I know where he is. Where? Dungeons on Temple Isle. That's not a nice jest. No jest, sadly. But don't worry, we'll pull him out. Triss has an idea. All we gotta do is find Dudu. So you must find Dudu in order to find Dandelion, with the aim of ultimately finding Ciri? Sounds like an awful lot of searching. Yep, that's right. That, that pretty much sums it up. You're always looking for someone, for someone else, so that that someone else will tell you where to find some other guy. <laughs> I know, it's like, sometimes you're like three or four layers deep in that shit. Half the time you'll be wondering, who am I looking for again? And why? I know a lot of you really like backstory in video games, but in Witcher 3, I don't mind saying it, it's a little overdone. Um, if you want to mitigate the epic length 
interactive movie complex that Witcher 3 has, don't be a nice guy, okay? When it comes to decisions in the, in the dialogue, don't be a nice guy. Whenever there's an option that looks like somebody's going to get upset, take it. And you'll probably have a juicy fight on your hands. I learned this the hard way. I originally thought that acting the nice guy would play out better as I progressed through the game, but I eventually realized, hey, wait a minute, I'm missing out on some combat here, you know, like going back and looking in the game guy and says, well, if you make this option, you know, you have a fight on your hands. I'm like, what? I missed that? Ah, oh, crap. So, like, you know, from that point on, when I realized that, every time there's like, you know, a pick a fight option, you know, I went for that, you know. So, if you're like me and you enjoy lots of combat in your video games, Play the Witcher 3 main mission line like an ornery son of a bitch, all right? And you'll do a lot better. And if you really get sick of the, if you really get sick of the story shmori, just go free roaming, and you'll quickly run into all kinds of combat. Okay, just ab abandon the main mission line altogether. Go do some side missions, or just go free roaming around. And within five minutes, you'll be in a fight, all right? But fair warning, that may be an issue when doing my real walkthrough. Um, I know of one mission right now that will probably run about 90 minutes, easy, maybe two hours. I think 90 minutes is like a, a conservative estimate. I think this mission, this one single mission will probably run two hours with nothing but NPC dialogue. One mission, okay? Straight dialogue. Maybe, if I recall correctly, a quick fist fight and a horse race, but other than that, Blah, 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 blah. All right? So fair warning. So that's it. That's what I've been up to. Um, real walkthrough of Witcher 3 definitely coming up. I don't want to give an exact ETA on that because it'll just put undue pressure on me. And um, I want to do this upright. So let's just tentatively say one week to 10 days from now. All right? Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for your patience and see you when the real walkthrough starts. Ciao for now. Hey you, we got an offer you know kind of refuse. Oh yeah? What's that? Subscribe! Okay, t now technically speaking, that's not an offer, that's an order. Kiwi? Yeah? Uh, come on, je veux dire. Uh, shut the fuck up. Okay.